Welcome to MCN and our 2023 long-term test fleet bikes. Today we're talking about the Honda Trans Out. This is Gareth who is the head of digital in motorcycling. That's it <laughs> for MCN. New job title. <laughs> yeah um, the idea of our long-term test bikes is that um, MCN staff live with the bikes for an extended period so that's what differentiates the test from our launch reports and our our normal MCN 250s. We kind of really drill in to what these bikes are, are like to live with. Um, but just before we go on and talk about this bike, I've asked you to prepare a list of good and bad things, which I'm gonna read back to you. Um, what's your riding history? Uh, riding history, a uh, variety of bikes. I am not, I haven't been riding as long as a lot of people on the team. So I passed in 2019. Um, and yeah, I've had all sorts actually. I've had the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, so retro, and yeah. then, um, yeah, um, Triumph Trident, um, the Yamaha R7, uh, this, um, I've uh, ridden SV650, uh, a few yeah. other bits and bobs, but quite diverse. Yeah, yeah. I'm not wedded to any kind of bike type, no. certainly. But you did like your R7. I did like the R7. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the first kind of adventure style bike you've had, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. The first, um, yeah, first uh, sort of long travel suspension job with, yeah. Uh, yeah, wind protection. I got to ride this at the beginning of the year at the launch and was kind of a little bit non-plus before I rode it. But then the second I rode it, I absolutely loved it because I think it's more than the sum of its parts. It's a fantastic bike and it had a load of views, a load of interest online as well, didn't it? Yeah, it was amazing, actually. Um, I mean... It does help. I will come on to it in a minute, but it, I think it looks great. It looks it looks, looks fantastic. Yeah, but it's um yeah, it's, it's really resonated with people. I think it's a decent price point um, for yeah. the amount of like just sheer kit you've got on it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah, it's, it's done a good job. Yeah. And I remember around the MCN 250, this beat the Suzuki V Strom 800 DE as well. So yeah, it's a good bike. Okay. Well, that's sort of what it's like dynamically, but to live with. Let's let's go through your points, and we we talk about the good points first. Yeah. And then the bad points later on. Yep. Uh, first thing you like about it is paint job. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just look at it. It's, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a kind of a retro feel to it, but yes, it looks fresh and brand new. It's, it's just a cool thing. You can get it in other colours. Um, I think there's a, a grey and a black, but they're quite, you know, they, they don't stand out anywhere near as much yeah. as this. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I just think it looks fantastic, particularly with the taller screen as well. Yeah, exactly. Kind of inspired by the original Trans Alp as well. Well, that's it. It's got a lot of colours. lineage in the name as well, hasn't it? Like there's a lot of heritage behind it. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Right, the next thing you like about it is the comfort. Yeah, I mean, it's just a bike you just, you feel like you can always just get on it and go and you get off it and you want to get back on it again. Yeah. It's um, a very, very comfortable seat. A few yeah. people have said the seat's a bit hard. Okay. I had a few uh, readers have written in and asked me um, if I think the seat is hard and what they can do about it. I've never had that problem. No. Um, you know, I've done some pretty long rides on it and I, I just feel, I just feel comfortable on it. And the, the riding position itself helps as well. Um, it just just feels like nicely put together. And you've done quite a long day on this one, one time in the summer. Yeah, we did a, um, well, I wish it was more summer than it was. It was <laughs> uh, We had four seasons in a day, but it oh, was, yeah. Um, yeah, we did 500 miles, including um, uh, UK's longest green lane at Rodham Rig. Um, and um, yeah, uh, not many motorway miles within that. So it was a long day riding quite dynamically but also riding off-road yeah tried uh, literally used every mode um on yeah. the bike all the riding modes used all of those on the day um and yeah i mean got off it yeah you know i mean it was a 7 7 30 a.m to 11 p.m <laughs> day yeah. uh, i got off it and yeah i was tired but i was more mentally tired and less kind of um tired of the bike if that makes sense yeah, yeah. So i just felt like i could go again i wanted to go again the next day really yeah that was with our editor, wasn't it? Our resident Nick Sanders. Yeah, the old uh, Iron Butt Rich Newland, <laughs> as I <they> say. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, and you, you got this bike quite late in the year, so you haven't done billions of miles. Well, you've still done about 4,000, haven't you? Still yeah, a decent about amount. That. Yeah, 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 about that. And um, yeah, in, in all kinds of conditions. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been good. Next thing you like about it is the handling, particularly at low speed and off-road. Yeah, I mean, um, taking the low speed first. The turning circle is remarkable on this thing. Yeah. It is really easy to wheel it around, even when you're not on the bike. It's yeah. just so easy to get around and in your garage and things like that. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and yeah, I mean, off-road, it was, um, I was, I was actually really surprised by how nice it was. It, it, as long as you, you can let the bike sort of move around a little bit underneath you, if you're comfortable with that, it just, just tackles everything, just keeps mm. on going. Really, really, really good. I mean, the tyres help a lot. These yeah. the Dunlop Trail Max Mix Tours, and um, they've just been imperious in 
every condition I've tried them. You know, they've been really good. Are they um, stand standard tires? Yeah, they're the, the OEM tires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I do have some knobblies to fit on it, so more knobbly tires to yeah. fit on it um, at some point, um, probably during the winter. But um, for now, yeah, I mean, these tires have, they, and, and they've hardly worn either. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's been really good. Have you done much off road before? No. So you actually jumped on this, went off road, and yeah. it wasn't unmanageable or too big or too powerful? No, well, one of the beautiful things about it is it's got um, the gravel mode. Right. So it gives you loads and loads of engine braking, um, it turns the uh, ABS off at the back. It's, mm. It sets the bike up exactly as you want it for off-road. Mm. Um, and because of that, you know, um, on, on Rudlam Rig, it's, it's quite an easy off um, sort of green lane. It's not like, it's, 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 it's nothing that's going to challenge a, a proper off-road rider. Yeah. However, um, you, you just, you know, click it into second gear and we were 20 miles an hour through puddles, through gravel, over yeah. rocks and all that sort of Good stuff. Fun. It was brilliant. Honestly, yeah. I was really surprised because I, I adored the track riding with the R7 last yeah. year. But off-road surprised me with how much I enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, talking of which, we did a group test in the summer in Sicily uh, with the Pirelli test riders. And uh, we had Carew fours on the bikes. And this did a lot better than anyone gave it credit for. So, yeah, yeah it's really good off-road. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next one is the engine performance. Yeah, it's cool. 91 horsepower, right? Yeah. Parallel, parallel twin. twin. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's, oh, parallel twin. You know, everyone wants a V twin or a triple or something, something else. However, 270 degree firing order. It sounds cool. Nice character, yeah. Yeah, it does. It feels cool. It's got nice vibes. It's not vibey. It's not a vibey bike, but it it just feels characterful. Yeah. Really helps with, again, the modes. I keep coming back to the riding modes, but I use them a huge amount. It's so easy to operate with your thumb. But it's, yeah, it, it, particularly in sport mode, where you've got full power, the full 91 horsepower. It It's it's just brilliant. Really good throttle response. And um, yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice engine, nice versatile engine. And it's brand new for this year, isn't it, this engine? Yeah. Yeah, brand new for this year uh, and came in the Hornet. Yeah. It's been slightly detuned, well, not detuned, but retuned re for this. Um, so it's got more sort of mid-range. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, it's, uh, yeah, really good. And um, I love the variable engine braking as well for the different yeah. types of riding that you're going to do. So um, you've got a yeah. lot of bikes in one with all these electronics. Yeah. Which brings me on to the riding modes, which you've mentioned. Yes, yeah, so so. I've, I've already banged on quite a lot about riding modes. But yeah, I mean, um, there are um, a variety of riding modes for the different uh, conditions. So we've got rain, we've got gravel, we've got sport and we've got normal. And then there's user, which allows you to um, tailor the parameters to your ideal kind of setup. Mm which I have done, um, and yeah, it's, it's just brilliant. But I found the user settings great, but because of the variety of things this bike can do, you do mm. end up switching between the, the yeah, riding yeah. modes quite a lot, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really useful, that. So you can customize the, the throttle response, the yep. traction control, ABS? ABS, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and engine braking. And engine braking, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, quite a lot you can change. Yeah. It's, it's, it, they're big changes as well. It's not just like, um, you know, my new Yeah, my exactly. New Sometimes, yeah, yeah, useful. Yeah. Right, you like the dash. The screen is clear and looks sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd agree, yeah. It doesn't look like a bike of this price point. Yeah. Do you know, you turn Which it on. Which is how much? This about is... About 10 grand. Yeah, about 10 grand. Yeah. Around 10 grand, yeah. But you switch it on. And um, as we'll come to later, I, 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 I rode this in the Tenere back-to-back -back quite a bit. And you really notice the difference in sophistication on um, screen and switch gear, really. But the screen itself is brilliant. It, it welcomes you when you switch it on. Um, but the other side of it is it's really clear. It changes from light mode to dark mode as the light fades as well during yeah, the day. Yeah, that's good. Um, lots of different things. And you could customize the huge amount as well. You can change the configurations of what you can see, um, the rev counter and all the different um, parameters you want. It's it's really really good, really interesting. And nice little touches when you live with the bike, things like that, aren't they? Definitely. And that's that's one of the good things about the long term test is we don't have time to yeah. luxuriate in all these fine details which you do. So that's really yeah. really good. Um, standard tires are excellent. You said so off road. You said they're good. They're good yeah. on road too. Oh, they're brilliant on road. Yeah, I've um, and I've ended up I suppose leaning on this bike a little bit more than I thought I would <laughs> for an adventure bike. Yeah. Um, it's um, yeah. <laughs> it feels it just feels so capable it's so predictable they they, they, they um, don't ever feel like they're cold it just yeah. feels like you can get on it and ride it from cold all the time and um, you, you can get what I think are surprising lean angles from yeah. this bike you know it's it's a good thing for a 21 inch front as well that's one of the things that impressed us at the launch how well it handled very well balanced yeah like a CB500X they're, they're similar 
Honda really now to build a, well, they're not silly, are they? No, no, they've done a few things. <laughs> they have the done a few things. <laughs> uh, USB, easy to install. Yeah, it's, it's lovely, lovely USB to charger. Yeah, so um, there is a, just a USB jack under the seat here. Yeah. I just ran a wire to the front. You can also have a um, little um, cigarette lighter, uh, 12 volt thing uh, yeah. installed there as an optional extra if you want. I didn't bother, but I'll just wire it up to the quad lock there. This little uh, okay, yeah. quad lock and um, it's just, you know, you stick it on, you don't have to worry about running out of battery and you've got full sat nav and everything else associated with a mobile phone. So what's Perfect. not to like? Perfect. Um, and you say it feels more premium than a Tenere 700. Yeah, going back to that um, whole thing about the screen, but also it's those touch points. It's the haptic mm. touch points on the on the bars. Um, the gear change feels really solid. Mm. Everything feels really direct, really nicely engineered. Yeah, It's a Honda. It's nicely engineered. It does. Um, it it feels like a bit of a step on from from the Tenere, which is a little bit older. In fairness, you know, it's yeah. an older bike. It's still a great bike. It is still a great yeah, bike. I'd yeah. agree that the, the detailing isn't quite as good as the yeah. modern stuff, is it? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and the final thing in this, probably the most important, uh, it's a Honda, and it hasn't gone wrong. Well, it hasn't missed. I mean, a bit. despite the, all the bells and whistles, you don't want it to let you down here. No, and no, it, no, not at all. Um, but it, but it really hasn't. I mean, the only thing it's had is um, a little bit of um, orange fur on the exhaust. But that yeah. was probably more my fault than the bike. You know, mm. <laughs> you know. So, um, but yeah, I, I, it got properly dirty as well when we went off roading, and it. It could have, um, it could easily have gone wrong, but it yeah. didn't. So yeah, you know. Brilliant. Full marks. So they're all your good points. Now, I've asked you to come up with some bad points, and generally with our long term, I've got to twist everyone's arms, including yours, to give me bad points. And if you dig really deep, there's some niggles. I mean, generally, this is a brilliant bike in there. So yeah. these are nitpicks, aren't they? Totally, totally. Uh, you said uh, it could sound better. It could sound better, yeah. This big old thing does restrict the noise a little bit. You've yeah. got a lot more induction noise than you have exhaust noise. And I do think that, um, I mean, I, they, they've, uh, SC Project have just released some uh, exhaust for this. Yeah. I'd be really interested to try that because uh, yeah. I think that would just make it a little bit more emotionally appealing. Mm -hmm. It's a very capable bike, but yeah, it's, it's, it's also, um, I want a bit of excitement as yeah. well. And um, I think we could get both. Exactly, and less weight as well with a yeah, different indeed. exhaust. Yeah. But I suppose Honda's hands are tied with all the cats they've got to put, the Euro 5 yeah. and all the rest. Yeah, every bike's like it, I think. Uh, I mean, this is a genuine uh, quibble, actually, we all found on our test. There's no cruise control. No. You need for a bike like this. Yeah, particularly if you're doing a lot of motorway miles. Um, so when, when I have done long, long motorway miles, I mean, um, uh... yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, particularly in like 50 mile an hour speed limits and like average speed cameras and all that sort of stuff. God blimey. It would just be nice for the bike to take the strain. And because it's so versatile and usable in so many other ways, yeah. you c it, it kind of almost feels incongruous with it not having it because it's got so exactly. much tech. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the reason it hasn't got it is because the bikes of this genre in this middleweight adventures haven't got it either. But yeah, I'd love to see cruise control on this. Uh, you're, you said that the Tenere, so I'm taking it you, you know someone with the Tenere that you've ridden one of our other it was, yeah, colleagues. One of, yeah, one of the other test bikes. Yeah, right. so it wasn't one of our um, long-term test bikes. Oh, okay. Bikes. Just a... it, was, it was one that we had in for a 4A test. Yeah. Um, so you said that the Tenere handles better at speed. It does feel like it handles better. It's, yeah. It just feels like it's um, uh, more involving. Uh -huh. in terms of handling. Um, it made this feel a little bit top heavy, interestingly. Yeah. Um, the Tenere just felt like, um, I don't know what it is about, it might be the rake of the front wheel, but it just felt like it was way more eager and progressive to turn mm -hmm. in than this. Yeah. But I'd have never said that if I hadn't ridden the Tenere. No. Yeah, if that makes sense. Like, I wouldn't in have, isolation, this is fantastic, but. Yeah, I wouldn't have criticized yeah. this bike and, until I'd ridden that yeah, other yeah. one. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's an interesting one, but there are, there are differences between the two, but mm. I came away thinking that the Tenere sort of slightly felt more like it meant business yeah yeah i think that's I think that's and it did win our overall adventure middleweight test in the year as well didn't it yeah but, yeah right uh the luggage luggage is expensive but feels cheap yeah you got it on today what luggage have you got uh so i've got a um they're all honda bits so all optional honda bits top box and two panniers yeah and the thing is it's it feels like it feels like they're made of cheap plastic mm -hmm. they scratch very easily and another thing that's slightly annoying is the um, there are tethers on the inside of the panniers. They get caught 
when you close the panniers every time. Right. <laughs> and I it's just see, little yeah. little bits and bobs like that. Yeah, and you, yeah. you pay, you're talking four figures for this luggage. Really? For for all three things, yeah. So it's it, it is expensive. Yeah. And yet it doesn't really match up with the premium feel of the rest of the bike. Right. For me. Yeah. Useful? Very useful. Um, at one point I had to be told to stop using it because I was just using it all the time. I was basically using like a car, like using the bike yeah. like a car. Um, however, you do really notice it when you take it off. Yeah, it yeah. handles much better, there's less wind resistance, fuel economy is better. You really do notice the difference there in terms of the way it handles yeah. without it on. So I have been, as you can see, riding it a lot more without yeah. the luggage. Yeah. You still can't beat a top box. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh right i totally agree with this one standard screen means huge wind noise yes the um not not the this screen but the um the well, wind screen or it's not a wind screen is it it's just there for show by the look of it it's a wind amplifier yeah it is yeah <laughs> it, the standard one now this is a tall screen on this bike um but i tried it with a standard one to start with and blimey it was noisy in my helmet like really yeah. really noisy Something I've read is levied along uh, across a lot of adventure bikes. You know, I don't think it's unique to this bike, but no, blimey, no, they are loud. It was really well, we did an MTN 250 with this and the Suzuki, and it was like sitting behind a jet engine for 250 miles. It was awful. Yeah, this one did make a big difference, though. So that's made a difference. Yeah, this for me, on the screen. Yeah, six foot tall, and this just shelters me just right. It's it's really good. Right, night and day. Very good. Uh, it's difficult to get up onto the main stand. Onto yeah, the it's stand. really heavy. You try and try and get this up onto the main stand to lube the chain or clean the bike. Yeah, which is a it's, it's an optional main stand and um, it's a really useful thing to be able to do. But blimey, you've got to put so much weight on it and yeah. proper lift the tail up to get yeah. it onto the main stand. Yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wish it. I agree with this one. Wish it. Wish it had a quick shifter. Yeah. So there is one as an option, not yep. standard. Yeah, unlike cruise control, you can spec this bike with um, yeah. with a uh, quick shifter. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know, it just makes life a little bit easier. Exactly. I had it on the R7, loved it, w came to this. And I love changing gear, don't get me wrong. It's, it is a part of the experience. Mm. However, even in lieu of cruise, cruise control, that would make this bike quite a lot sort of um, easier to live with day to day. And it, it just flows nicer, doesn't it, yeah. when you've got a quick shifter, even when you're short shifting, it's just yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a nice thing. It's not yeah. a laziness thing, is it? It's just, no. it, adds, it adds to the riding experience. I think so, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I agree, it should have one. Uh, this is a criticism of most adventure bikes, really. It's, there's so many bits and bobs, it's fiddly to clean. Yeah, yeah, it just is. I mean, there's not really much more to say about it, but you can see there's a huge amount going on around the fairings. and it's. It, I've, I've cleaned it a few times and just like looked back and thought, oh, yeah, I've missed, <laughs> I missed that bit. bit. Missed that <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. You, you end up being, you end up, being so sort of almost like anal with cleaning things. Yeah. And, you, and you're like, I'm spending so much time doing this, so I should be riding it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but Compared yeah. to your R7, swathes of beautiful flat body work. It was just a joy to clean. Yeah. to clean that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two more. The headlight adjustment was way out. Oh yeah, when Standard. I was um, when I went out riding with Rich, it was actually him that said it, because when, uh, when the sun went down, um, we stopped for fuel. That's about the only thing we did stop for that day. <laughs> um, we, um, yeah, we stopped for fuel and uh, he said um, that basically I was blinding him in his mirrors because um, the headlight was uh, adjusted so high and it was just bouncing around right. in his mirrors. Uh, so I thought, okay, um, let's get that sorted. I hadn't really noticed that before, um, but then again, I don't really ride much with other people because I'm antisocial. Um, but what it is, is the headlight adjustment itself there's two headlight adjuster bolts there's one you can see which is a silver bolt here yeah um but that's side to side the up and down one is proper up like underneath this screen here yeah and it is so difficult to get to it's an eight mil spanner and you it's so hard to try and adjust that i spent ages and really did my knuckles in um try, trying to get it sorted but you know little thing but actually when you live with the bike that's the sort of thing you learn isn't it so, exactly yeah yeah and the lights are good when they're pointing the right way yeah yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah, they work perfectly well. It's just, it's just, yeah, getting them pointing the right yeah. way. Exactly. Um, and finally, you said it could be a little bit more exciting. Yeah. I guess that's a Honda trait, really, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've we, we, we've already covered the exhaust, but it just the the Tenere felt more exciting. Mm. You know, like it, 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 there's so much potential in this bike, and I think it does such a great job in so many different ways that, that it's almost to its detriment in terms of excitement. Yeah, you know it's so capable that it, yeah, yeah. That's that's the impression I get anyway. But yeah, really good. I mean, great bike overall. Not, not many negatives really. No, you're like like you say, I was scraping the barrel, mate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you like this style of bike now you've lived with it for a decent amount of time? Yeah, I do. 
I do. I'm not sure that I would have this sort of bike as my only bike, which is a weird thing to say, because I think a lot of people do. Because it's supposed to be an all-rounder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I do want that more exciting kind of element of motorcycling as well. Uh, I really, I love the sport bike So you scene. love your R7. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I love the performance. Could do with more, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great bike for what it's meant for. Yeah. It's brilliant. But you probably wouldn't buy one as your only bike. No, not as many bike, no. No, that's brilliant. Well, you kind of, what you said is sort of borne out what we've said all the way through the year when we've been road testing. It's a great bike, isn't it? Yeah. Not many faults. Nope. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for showing us around. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos like this coming very soon.